And now turning to our final joint presentation, we'll hear about health plan efforts to educate pregnant women about the importance of dental care and connect them to services. I'm so pleased to introduce Dr. Timothy Custer, who is Dental Director for the Dental Network of America, and Angela Hastings, who is Director of Exchange Product Ops for the Retail Exchange Affected Market at Healthcare Service Corporation and Blue Cross Blue Shield of Texas. Okay. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. This is Dr. Custer. Um, and as my slide indicates here, I'm also joined today by Angela Hastings, who is the Director of Healthcare Management with Blue Cross Blue Shield of Texas. Um, our presentation today, Dental Wellness and Pregnancy, Before, During, and After, will focus on steps being taken in the private sector um, by an insurance carrier to accomplish three things. Number one, to assist expected mothers to better understand and manage their pregnancy, this being accomplished through our voluntary prenatal program, Special Beginnings. Uh, number two, to increase the awareness to the importance of dental health. And number three, to increase utilization of their dental benefits. Numbers two and three uh, accomplished through our dental wellness program, Blue Care Dental Connection, which will be discussed at a later, later point in the presentation. But as our title indicates, before, during, and after, these efforts are a process. It's an, it's an educational process that begins before pregnancy and continues after childbirth. So it's a, it's a packaging of initiatives that we do um, unique to each of our members. So during our presentation, you'll see or hear a reference to a variety of companies. You know, so to avoid you know, any, any confusion, let me explain um, more precisely who Angela and I work for. Angela works for, obviously, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Texas. I work for Dental Network of America. Both companies are part of Healthcare Service Corporation, or HCSC. And HCSC is a, is a non-investor-owned mutual insurance company that operates through its Blue Cross and Blue Shield divisions in five states in Illinois, Texas, New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Montana, and also through several subsidiaries, one of which is Dearborn National. So Dental Network of America is the dental portion of Dearborn National and is the administrator for all dental products for Healthcare Service Corporation. So as I make a reference to our efforts and initiatives in this presentation, our efforts and initiatives apply to all Healthcare Service Corporation members. So with that said, I'd like to begin our presentation with Angela providing an overview of our volunteer prenatal program, the Special Beginning. Hi, and thank you, Dr. Coaster. This is Angela Hastings. Um, as Dr. Coaster stated, I am um, Director of Case Management for our Exchange Operations Program, and that is an es essentially our retail market segment with Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Um, the Special Beginnings Program, as he stated, is a comprehensive maternity program designed to assist our pregnant members in better understanding and managing their pregnancy. The Special Beginnings Program integrates high-risk pregnancy identification and the case management program and is managed by dedicated registered nurses and board certified case managers with backgrounds in labor and delivery, postpartum, pediatrics, high-risk OB, and uh, NICU. The Special Beginnings Program is designed to provide access to appropriate prenatal care for our members. It also provides ongoing coordination of care by the case managers with expertise in obstetric case management. It also identifies and promotes utilization of facilities appropriate for high-risk deliveries and neonatal emergencies. It helps to improve clinical outcomes and promote prenatal and assessment of risk for members in order to reduce the likelihood of preterm delivery. It helps to reduce the cost associated with preterm and low birth weight infants. It also promotes well baby care. And we provide outreach to the Hispanic community by utilizing Spanish-speaking nurses and translating educational literature in Spanish. We also provide fathering tips and screen our partic participants for depression at six weeks po postpartum. Our program provides these services, um, prenatal and postnatal health education, and guidance from pregnancy to six weeks after delivery. And it is also offered in all the plan states within HCSC, 
which are Texas, Illinois, Oklahoma, New Mexico, New Mexico, and Montana. Some of the key points that the uh, registered nurse case managers uh, emphasize with this population are that uh, good dental care is very important in pregnancy and may reduce the risk of preterm labor. They also strongly encourage our members to seek regular dental care, including dental cleanings early in pregnancy. In addition to good daily dental hygiene, brushing, and flossing, also professional cleanings and oral exams are important. Pregnancy increases the risk of dental and peri periodontal disease. So good dental hygiene can prevent other medical conditions as well and complications of pregnancy. So once enrolled in our case management program for special beginnings, our members receive an in-depth pregnancy questionnaire that helps us identify whether they have any risk factors that might adversely affect their pregnancy. And the results of that questionnaire actually determines the level of outreach that our members will be provided with from the case managers. They also receive a very nice and helpful book which covers um, you know, a multitude of common pregnancy and infant care topics. It's called The Simple Guide to Having a Baby, What You Need to Know, How to Stay Healthy During Pregnancy, How to Care for Your Baby, How to Handle Labor Pain. And there's also a, a section included in the book that talks about uh, seeing your dentist um, for checkups and why you should get treated for things like gum disease uh, and infections during uh, pregnancy. I'd also like to just give the disclaimer that the Special Beginnings Program is designed with the goal to assist healthcare providers and members in better coordinating care and improving health outcomes. The program is not a substitute for the independent medical judgment of a healthcare provider. Healthcare providers are instructed to use their own best medical judgment based upon all available information and the condition of the patient in determining a course of treatment. Regardless of any benefit determination, the final decision regarding any treatment or service is between the patient and the health care provider. So the Special Beginnings Program is completely voluntary and a benefit of Blue Cross and Blue Shield of uh, Illinois, New Mexico, Texas, Montana, and Oklahoma. A member's benefit will not be affected if she decides not to participate or if she withdraw withdraws from the program after she has enrolled. Thank you. I'll turn it over now to Dr. Custer. Thanks, Angela. Our wellness program, Blue Care Dental Connection, uh, is based on the premise that oral health impacts one's overall health. And in doing so, it addresses a wide scope of health issues, everything from dental-only issues, such as adult gum disease to tooth decay in kids to medical dental complications as it pertains to women's health, such as prenatal, obviously, diabetes and heart disease. So it's a, it's a program designed to educate the member, our members in a targeted fashion, doing so by either web education, integration of data and internal resources or um, an outreach, just overall general outreach. And it's a program designed to engage the member. So it really has one goal in mind, that is to educate the member so they will change the behavior. You know, do something now that they weren't doing, let's say, 12 months before. So our dental wellness model has five components to it, intended to um, educate the member and incentivize the member. The five components are web education, data mining and outreach, integration, and really two levels of incentives designed to encourage the use of their dental benefits, one of which is enhanced benefits, which I'll discuss a little later, and also the second is just gets discounts on dental products, such as Procter & Gamble products, Happy and Crest toothpaste, and their other um, associated products with that. So the member having either access to one or more of these features really allows them to really educate themselves or to be educated, whatever best fits their needs and whatever best fits their style. You know, our job with this program um, is to put the information out there. Our job is to identify the member, educate the member, and then follow through with the member on an ongoing basis over and over again. 
So our, our web education is our wellness website, Dental Wellness Center, as you can see here. And, and, and like other websites out there, you know, they're all pretty similar, obviously. They're all very interactive and very self-serving, and really it, it mirrors many of the web tools already found on the medical side. Um, such as a cross advisor, it has an ask a feature, ask a dentist feature, the risk assessments, you know, a library of articles, information, everything from A to Z. So for the for the user of this, for the member, prenatal or not, it's a very comprehensive site and very user friendly. And for those members, those patients that like getting their information, you know, firsthand and doing their research, this really, uh, this website here really serves as one stop shopping for those those level of members. You know, but we also chose to enhance the visibility of oral health to members of in special beginnings by modifying the landing page that are programmed, as you can see here. And we did so by including a teaser question about dental hygiene, which is in that um, maroon box down below. You know, and, and we did so because, you know, just as health and exercise and diet are important to the effect of mother, you know, so is oral health. It's just as, just as critical to both the mother and the child, but it gets as you heard in previous presentations, and just my own personal opinion, it gets a lot less attention than it should. You know, so by linking to this resource page and within that box, the member has the option to either select our dental wellness website, which you have just seen, to give them information, or link to the page you see on the right here, where the member will have more access and more information about oral care for both the expected mother as well as her baby. Our education is, is targeted. Our, our program mines data. It mines medical data and it mines dental data, and it tells us who's at risk at, at different time intervals, either it's a monthly basis or a semi-annual basis or an annual basis. It tells us who's at risk for dental only issues, and it tells us who's at risk for certain health conditions that may be complicated by, by dental, such as pregnancy. And our, our range for doing this is really is all ages in our program, everything from birth to 100, for example. And our targets are, are based on certain milestones, certain life events along the way. So for example, our, our targets could be something as basic as um, missed cleanings, missed dental cleanings, or just your first cavity, or something a little more personal, a little more complicated, such as being pregnant and having your first child. So if, if you think about it, you know, if, if we were targeting a member in this process, let's just say we're targeting Mrs. Smith, our program would reach out to her before her pregnancy if she missed the cleaning or she had some recent um, treatment for gum disease. And that outreach there would be with a certain message. Our program would reach out to her during her pregnancy with a certain message, with a different message, obviously. Our program would reach out to her after her childbirth with a different message. And our program would reach out to her for her baby's first birthday, again, with a different message. So our logic here is that these are all, you know, important life events that warrant education and require some action to be taken. And our logic here is that we will do it over and over and over again, because at some point the message, based on the, the life event, based on how important it is to the individual, something will stick. Um, and again, if we take our outreach very seriously with this program, in fact, in 2015, our targeted outreach contacted almost 600,000 um, healthcare service corporation members between dental and medical dental messaging. So it's a very, a very comprehensive program, and we take it very, very seriously. So the question often asked is, really, is whether improving oral health can truly impact a pregnancy, either by reducing complications and re or reducing medical costs. I mean, it really is, is no question that a pregnancy complicates one's oral health, as you've seen recently in the previous presentation, and also as supported by the American Dental Association or the American Academy of, of Periodontology. You know, with all, all the bodily changes that go on during pregnancy, it's obvious, there's an obvious effect on the mouth. But the question really is, does the arrow go the other way? You know, the question is whether poor oral health complicates a pregnancy by either preterm birth and low birth weight baby, or low birth weight. And to be honest, you know, the, the debate is really is still open on this. You know, over the past number of years, there's been many studies, many articles in this topic, and some argue a very strong association between periodontal health and, and preterm birth and low birth weight. And others argue there's no association at all. And, and they're all from reputable sources. So really at this time, you know, at least in my opinion, the jury really is still out with something definitive on this topic. But regardless of which argument, you know, holds more water, the consensus is that maintaining oral health is a critical component to, for the expected mother as well as ultimately for the child. And that's the basis of our program and that's the basis of all our efforts 
in this program. So a program identifies expectant mothers and educates them about the importance of dental care. And what you see here is a snapshot of our 2016 mailing that went out to for, for prenatal that was released in June of this year, 2016. But our education you know, that doesn't stop at, at childbirth. As you can see here, you know, lingering dental problems with a new mother can also be a source of, of cavity-causing bacteria being sent along to the newborn. You know, and really, with, with all the obligations that come with having a newborn, you know, I would guess personally that this topic you see here is pretty far down the list for a new mom to remember. There's plenty of other things to be worried about aside from you know, her oral health. So, so basically, because of that, you know, our program takes the initiative, identifies the new mothers, and educates them about the importance of dental care and how best to avoid having these cavity-causing germs spread to their newborn. And again, what you see here is a snapshot of our 2016 mailing that went out in June to um, the new mothers we identified. And of course, knowing that the, that the rule of thumb uh, first checkup by the first birthday is often overlooked by, by many people. You know, we remind new parents with a birthday card you see here that it's time for the baby's first checkup. So the birthday card really does two things. It sends a, a, a birthday wish, but also reminds the parent if our data shows there's been not, not been a checkup yet in our system, this will go out and remind the parent it's time for the baby's first checkup. First checkup by the first birthday as a rule of thumb. But of course, you know, efforts are one thing and outcomes are another. And what you see here is a snapshot uh, of our 2014 outreach mailings, which represents members that were in need of education, members that were in need of changing the behavior, and as a result, members who received the mailing. So in each category you see here, just for example, these three categories, these members had no cleaning or no checkup for the 12 months prior to our mailing. So for periodontal, you know, 12 months following the mailing, 7% of members followed through after our outreach and received the cleaning. So if, if you think about it, let's say we reference Mrs. Smith again that we talked about earlier. You know, if Mrs. Smith was in the 7% group of members, this would have been a great start, you know, for her getting her oral health under control before becoming pregnant, before planning a family. Because it's an excellent start just having this kind of an outreach. For prenatal, 25% of, of members followed through and received a dental checkup. So again, in reference to Mrs. Smith, you know, if she was in this group, having a checkup would have identified any potential oral health issues caused by her pregnancy. And then lastly, for new mothers, 21% followed through and received a dental checkup. So again, for Mrs. Smith, one more time, having a checkup at this stage of her, of her, of her career, of her life, you know, this would have avoided having oral health issues that may have contributed to transferring you know, any kind of cavity-causing bacteria to her newborn. So, you know, it's all about different life stages and different messaging. A program also coordinates a communications calendar um, using social media to complement each of our wellness mailings, and oftentimes in concert with various monthly themes, whether it's a Diabetes Awareness Month or a Healthy Heart Month or Children's Dental Health Month. And what you see here is a recent posting that went out, I believe it was last month, for prenatal. So, again, it's all about repetition. We have our mailings going out and we follow through in, in various various capacities to re-engage re the member and, re and re remind the member of the message over and over and over again. In this case here with the posting about prenatal. Okay. So our, our program accommodates all types of mediums because obviously in our, in our membership base everyone's different. You know, some prefer paper so we use our hard copy mailers. Some members prefer technology, so we use our emails and our social media and our wellness website, the Dental Wellness Center. But some people, you know, their, their preference, their hot button, their, their motivator could be a person-to-person -person contact or it could be just pure financial dollars and cents. So to accommodate them, we integrate internal resources um, as another means to educate the member in change of behavior. What you see here are three examples of this integration, all being utilized today some involving prenatal, and the ones that are not involving prenatal are planned to be um, started up next year, 2017. The examples are sharing data with the medical personnel to close dental gaps in care, using customer service message campaign 
as a means to re-engage the members um, on an ongoing basis, and offering enhanced benefits to reduce, as a means to reduce any level of financial barriers to care. So at this time, our, our process of sharing real-time data with our medical staff at this time is limited to diabetics and heart patients only, those that are enrolled in our medical management program. So for the purpose of, of an example, I want to show how it works because we'll be doing this next year for, for prenatal. Um, the way the program works is we share information like you see here, which allows for a dialogue about dental gaps in care between the member and the nurse clinician. And the information we have, you can see making a reference to an 18-month gap in care for cleanings or perio work, this is embedded in their health summary on a monthly basis. And it will continue every month, month after month, which then allows for you know, the dialogue between the member and, and the nurse about the importance of a cleaning. And this will happen until um, the member goes in for a cleaning and then drops off our list. So really, until the member gets a cleaning, you know, every time the nurse opens, contacts the member and opens this chart, dental is a part of their clinical indicator, which then allows for some dialogue and education about the need for a dental cleaning. So we envision, again, the same type process to be initiated in 2017 for members enrolled in special beginnings, where the process will be identifying dental gaps in care, like you see here, sharing it with the nurse clinician and using it as a, another means to educate the expectant mother and how better to manage their pregnancy by improving their oral health. Okay, and a snapshot just of how this dialogue is working up to this point, this is a snapshot from our second quarter in 2016 for our diabetic and heart patients. So on average, you know, roughly 5.5% of members follow through with a dental cleaning after having this information embedded in their health summary, and we assume you know, having some dialogue with the nurse clinician, which really is, is very, very good. So as a means to, you know, to further influence members already contacted through, let's say, mailers or emails or social media previously, involving medical personnel is really proven to be a very, very effective means to, to get the member to do additional treatment. Because again, certain people, this is what the motivator that was necessary, a person-to-person -person contact. Okay. And customer service campaigns medical or dental, can be customized for any message to any audience. And really it serves as, a, as, a, as an effective means to re-engage the member, reinforce the message, follow in a previous contact, whether that contact was previous mailing or, as I just mentioned, dialogue with a nurse. And what you see here uh, are outcomes from a campaign we ran and finished up in May of this year. And again, this particular campaign didn't involve prenatal, but that is planned for 2017 as well. But what this does show is how effective a customer service campaign can be. So what we have here with this campaign is targeted our mailings from last year that went out to diabetic or heart patients, but also missed the cleaning for the previous 12 months. <clears throat> and the campaign involved all five Blue Cross plans with Healthcare Service Corporation, but the numbers you see here, just for the purpose of this presentation, involve just uh, Illinois, Blue Cross of Illinois. So with the campaign, uh, our target audience was 1,270 members. Over the course of 12 months, 265 called in the customer service, of which 257 agreed to hear the message. And of those, 86 then turned around and received the cleaning or some level of periodontal treatment after the customer service contact. So again, at 33%, it's a very, very good outcome. And again, as our plans are to use a similar campaign next year to, uh, to reinforce both the prenatal mailings as well as members enrolled in special beginnings. And to some members, as I mentioned before, it's all about finances. It's all about the, the dollars and cents, so we offer enhanced options as an incentive designed to encourage the use of their benefits by reducing financial barriers to care. So, for example, with enhanced benefits, we offer richer benefits or extra benefits based on, based on the combination of the service performed and the member's health condition. So, for example, for cardiovascular disease, the members would have richer benefits, 100% benefit for scaling services as well as for periodontal maintenance services. For diabetes, it would be the same matching for scaling and periodontal maintenance. And for pregnancy, it would be the richer benefits for scaling, um, the richer benefits for periodontal maintenance, but also extra cleanings and extra checkups during the term of their pregnancy. And what you see here, um, just an example of one company's experience 
offering enhanced benefits in Illinois, uh, where you can see, you know, over the course of a year, um, the employees use the benefits of extra cleanings, preparial maintenance, as well as scaling services performed, which really which might not have been performed at all if it wasn't for the incentives in place. So that was very, for the purpose of encouraging members and giving them some incentive, it's good to see that the services are being rendered as they, as they present here on the slide. Okay. And lastly, in 2015, we launched a, a project to deliver dental kits to a select number of members enrolled in the Special Beginnings Program, about 350 kits. And what it included was a package of a power brush, rinse, paste, and floss. So, you know, as, as opposed to, you know, using our mailers and our emails and our websites as an educator, this time we use products as a means to uh, reinforce the message that oral health is very important to both the mother and, and the newborn. And this was very, very well received as we received um, testimonials for probably 12 months afterwards when the members who received this. And with that, I will turn the slides back over to Angela. Thank you, Dr. Kupster, for the very comprehensive view of our programs within HCSC. Um, I will uh, conclude with a couple of scenarios that are based on, you know, information that we have received from our membership and questions that the case managers that manage that population come across as they are managing these member members. And it relates more to the dental coverage itself. Um, so for the first scenario, um, the question would be, what would happen if a woman is enrolled in a qualified health plan through the marketplace and becomes pregnant but does not have a standalone dental plan? And so what we noted was as part of our case management program for special beginnings, we would screen the member through asking a series of questions, and that was the questionnaire that I alluded to earlier, which has some targeted questions related to oral health. And we would have a discussion telephonically and also send um, email correspondence, educational uh, correspondence. Uh, we would have a conversation with the member regarding the importance of practicing good oral hygiene and maintaining good oral health, and then advising that poor dental hygiene may result in and places them at higher risk for going into preterm pre labor. We would also provide instruction on how to obtain additional information on the subject through other reputable organizations um, to include um, the uh, American Dental Association and also um, Colgate. Uh, they also have some really good information for women regarding oral care during pregnancy. If the member were to inform us that they did not have dental coverage or inquired about whether or not there was dental coverage available for them on or off of the exchange, we would then uh, make sure that we were able to get them over to someone in customer services or sales uh, to talk about, uh, to give them more detailed information about the standalone dental plans uh, that are available when, uh, you know, that are available for, for purchase. Uh, per our sales division, we do offer standalone dental plans to our members in all the plan states to include offerings for Illinois. All adults have the option of enrolling or not enrolling in adult dental plan offerings when an on or off exchange medical plan is also purchased during open enrollment. However, if the adult purchases off exchange coverage for a child, they must also purchase pediatric dental coverage, even if it's a newborn or um, provide the insurer reasonable assurances that they have pediatric dental coverage elsewhere. For the second scenario or the second question, which would be uh, and we got that quite frequent, would, and it would not only be Illinois, but the other plan states would Blue Cross and Blue Shield reach out to promote a standalone dental plan, and can these be purchased outside of open enrollment? If they can't purchase a plan, what happens? So enrollment in the dental plans on the marketplace are limited to the open enrollment period or when the individual 
or when the individual has an, a qualifying life event. And some of those, some examples of those are marriage, divorce, the birth of a child, court order, et cetera. So individuals may inquire directly to dental plans available outside of the marketplace to determine if such plans allow enrollment and coverage outside of their open enrollment period without requiring a qualifying event. Our care management programs will also seek to provide any available community resources for dental services that may be available to members in their service areas, but the member has to follow up with the resources to inquire about the requested services for themselves. And some examples of those services are low-cost or free dental services that may pre be provided in the different plan states, and we have an electronic um, resource base that separates the resources by states and counties. Um, that, you know, tell us whether there are any dental services, for example, available for, for our membership in that particular state or that county. And Dr. Kunster did talk about uh, dental coverage in some of his slides, and this particular slide just alludes to some of the resources, which include Blue Care Dental, which is available for individuals and families. And our members also have the option of uh, going on to our websites and participating in a program called Blue 365, which is a wellness program that offers, amongst, among other um, resources, dental resources uh, for personal care. One of them being the dental solutions that you see there. That is a discount program uh, with a network of dentists that our members can elect to be a part of. and. Um, it's really small there, but you know you see the benefits that they can join along with their families. There's no waiting period. You know they don't have to worry about the forms or the you know the qualifying events and that kind of thing. Um, it's a, a monthly fee, and you know they can join and for however long they would like and you know discontinue when, if they wanted to discontinue. But that's another option for them if they don't if they've missed the open enrollment period and do not have um, dental benefits or uh, have not elected dental coverage because, you know, for some women, they, you know, it may not have been planned that they are now pregnant, but they did not elect the, the dental coverage. So this may be uh, an alternative or a solution that they could use in the interim and then hopefully in the next open enrollment period, they might elect to get the dental coverage. Okay, and thank you um, for allowing us the opportunity to speak with you regarding pregnancy and oral health. Um, again, my name is Angela Hastings, and my email address is Angela underscore Hastings at bcbstx.com. Dr. Kuster, did you have anything else in closing? Uh, no, that should be it. Just passing it back to Catherine, I guess, to coordinate any kind of Q&A.